Um, well, after that video, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something very important. My presentation should get over in about an hour. Um, so <laughs> for the next one hour, we're going to be talking a lot about what we're doing in Vigrid. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? <clears throat> All right, so I want to talk a little bit about Vigrid and what we do. And thanks for inviting us, Carlos. We appreciate it. A um, couple of years ago, when Carlos and Marguerite and all of us were at Stanford, I worked on a project which talked about how do you take small capacities and value chains and supply chains and build something around it. And I went on to work on that in my previous job where I was um, the head of a large company. But I worked on a parallel, working on the idea, trying to think of how we could create a, a company that could take that one idea and impact over a billion people in the long term. When I talked to a couple of friends of mine, they told me, what do you know about agriculture? And I said, nothing. And they said, everybody fails in agriculture in India. So I said, I don't mind being a statistic. But I also told them that I'm a fool in paradise, so that's OK. Because that gives me the ability and gives us the ability to think out of the box and try and do something that could make a difference in the long term. So next up, please. Um, we started with a vision. If we could take small farmers in India and then globally and start to connect them, we could make an impact in the long term. Why is this important? I'll talk about India for the moment. In India, we have over 100 million farmers as farming communities, which means you take an average family of four that represents about 400 to 500 million people who live on less than $2 a day. And these farmers are so small, they have like two, five, seven, ten acres of land. And with that small capacity of land, they don't have the ability to raise capital. They don't have the ability to go and build a business. They don't have the ability to get the best technology and definitely don't have access to markets. If you remember, uh, Professor Anil Gupta talked about access to markets. And I said, if we could solve this, this could be incredible. It could be something that could become a social movement, not just a business in the long term. <clears throat> so I asked, and we went about talking to people and said, these were the core challenges the farmers faced. In, in diversity of an environment, small capacity, they don't have access to technology, no access to capital, no access to markets. And everything in India, 20% of our entire economy, the diesel goes just to agriculture. So that's pretty large. So what did we do? We came up with an idea saying, can we aggregate thousands of small farmers within a certain radius, call it the first mile, and that aggregation creates economies of scale and scope, and we could just be a game changer. And we started Biogrid about two and a half years ago. We put in about a million dollars of our own capital between friends, families, and fools. Uh, we were the fools, the founders. Uh, the rest were friends and family, they still are friends and family, uh, very important, which means we did something, right? And we spent a million dollars of our capital going out there and doing what we did best. And guess what? We spent it all. So that was good. That was a good start for us. And then we got a uh, four and a half million dollar investment from an eight billion dollar company in India as a strategic partner. We'll tell you why. Can you go ahead? <clears throat> Now, when we decided to do business with farming communities, we said, what can we choose as an agricultural portfolio that will, be, that will grow anywhere from 300 millimeters to 500 millimeters of rainfall or 600 millimeters of rainfall? That means there's no food crop. It can be served as an intercrop or a main crop. It will have a perennial demand side market today and a potential biofuel of tomorrow. And we came up with two crops. One was castor and one was pongamia. Pong castor being a six-month crop, so the existing markets. Pongamia, the obvious choice. And we said, if we could do this and build a business model, aggregating thousands of small farmers, that would be incredible. And that's what we did. We chose pongamia because pongamia was a product that fitted all the criteria, and so did castor. And we went about building our business from the scratch, working with small farmers, five, 10 of them, spanning on. Yeah, next slide, please. Built our own IP. 
prove the economics out. Started with something called the first mile. And why was it called the first mile? It's on the screen. Capitalism was built on centralization of resources, which is why in energy, uh, in technology, in telecommunications, as a consumer, we are often referred to as the last mile. And nobody wants to do business with the last mile. We're the consumer because it costs too much money. So we said if we could build a model that changes everything else and makes the consumer a presumer, which means goes from being just consuming but producing and what to consume, we could do something incredible. So we took the farmer, kept them small, built a social network. We're like the Facebook equivalent of what we're doing on the field in reality, building communities through relationships, aggregating thousands of farmers in hundreds of villages. And in India, that's pretty incredible. Because for those of you who are from India, been to India, lived in India, traveled in India, will tell you one acre of land is a lot of land. Because there are 10 people who bought and sold it already. So when you do a 1,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 acre community, that's large in India. Even large corporations don't do that kind of scale. And then we put the model, saying we'll aggregate the small farmer, we'll use a social network, we'll do that within a radius, we'll aggregate processing capacity, we'll buy it back at fair market value, we'll provide all the inputs in the crop management, we'll raise the productivity, we'll use the best inputs, we'll crush it, we'll use the byproducts, and we'll create a whole new ecosystem. Okay? We'll leverage partnerships. We started small. We went to a small community. Today, we're in over 250 villages. We're across India, over 2,000 farmers, and we're expanding. We want to do this now right across India. Then we want to go to Africa, China, the United States. And I'll tell you why. Uh, could you first click on the distributed and captive energy, please? And if the, if the audio is connected. If the audio is not connected. Please watch this very carefully like you have, got, have been doing all along. Yeah, click it, click it. OK, that's technology. <laughs> so let me make this simpler. Okay, looks better here. So that's Foro, Alibay, the student aerospace engineer from MIT. Okay, so Foro Alibay came from MIT. And in the Cambridge so MIT partnership, we're starting where we're doing here. I'll tell you where we're doing it very, very interesting. We took this a standard 5 kVA diesel generator, no modification, showing her how to do that. using the, products like Fungamia, which are non-edible. This whole initiative. We crush those seeds. We get the oil. It's called straight vegetable oil. It's not and converted to diesel. SVO. It's as is. That's a non-edible. Straight vegetable oil. So it's still a vegetable oil. Being poured into okay. the Very standard important. stock By definition. Value. Although it's non edible. generator without any modification. That's a this is diesel an generator of what standard of the shelf. Technology application on existing platforms for. This is a university campus in, in Karnataka near Bangalore. They've got great infrastructure, micro, great signage, great, great everything, but they don't have markets, electricity for 18 hours a day. Local economies. So that makes it hard for scientists to send reports when there's no power. Okay, it's shot as a home video because it has greater credibility that way. Rather make this a marketing a video than this. That we've... No modification. Start it, sir? Yes, please. 
Let me get the other side. Let me get there. Okay. What does that mean? It means we could power 600,000 villages in India without an electricity grid. It means you could have healthcare in India now without the government $15 billion program that never gets to the people. It means you could have people, women delivering children and not dying because of postnatal healthcare. It means children can have education. It means farmers will raise productivity. And how is that? Technology. All of this running on vegetable oil, not edible. Can you not put your hand to bring the water back? I don't want to waste the water. How far could we go? Uh, okay. Here's us driving an Audi at 250 kilometers an hour in Europe the on vegetable oil. Just the mineral. The Just meeting all the European emission yeah. standards. Exactly. And then we have the truck companies and the tractor companies. So in Germany, we have a, a lot of important vehicle companies and they just want to sell diesel or gasoline. So that meets the jaw dropping spec that they talked about earlier. Uh, why are we doing that? We're doing this because now we want to create oil supply chains that we can replicate globally. Imagine now you have a million farmers who are going from unproductive and $2 a day to earning as much as anybody else could earn in the world, using land which is highly unproductive, no rainfall, no irrigation, and you can power the whole economy. Uh, the company that invested with us is a $8 billion energy diesel company. They do things from trucks to uh, automotive and agriculture and energy. Now, they, when we talk to companies like that, they say, well, we want to be a partner. And by the way, you get carbon credits for running it because it's, it's carbon sequestration, okay? Uh, what are we doing here? We're also collecting the waste biomass and we are creating biocharcoal, which will sequestrate carbon for 1,000 years. It will raise agriculture productivity. Some of the audience will talk about biochar. Uh, we did all this from scratch and Think of the potential that we can replicate this worldwide. You know, I wrote, a, I wrote an email to the United States government saying we can produce trillions of dollars of vegetable oil-based non-edible in the United States. So you don't have to spend $700 billion, ship it out somewhere else, and somebody ships you back terrorism. And you could now do that and produce another 400 million automobiles in Detroit. And you can produce that dollar in the United States. We're doing this in India. Uh, we're now becoming a case study at INSEAD, which is very interesting because it's going to be taught to the world. And as social entrepreneurs, this is a for-profit model. Uh, philanthropy works best when it's for-profit because then it becomes sustainable. Then this is sustainable socially because farmers are getting involved. Uh, environmentally, you can guess why, as well as economically. So somebody walked up to me the other day and said, well, if you're doing all of this, will you become an oil company? I said, what's wrong with that? But except that there are a million other people involved. And that million will become two, and the two will become five. And for those of you, like I said, repeat this, for those of you who have been to any emerging economy, whether it's Asia, it's in South America, it's in India, having people participate in a social movement is the most powerful force you can talk about. And the trigger that Margarita talked about earlier is very simple. Do you want to go from $2 a day to $10 a day and $15 a day? Thank you.